hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Welcome back into the kitchen with me. I have something fun for you today. Now here's the deal, okay? I'm doing this for my Nana. My Nana directly told me to tell you all about this, okay? You know that we've been doing some videos on Great Depression Preparedness, and I'm setting up for the next one as we speak, so that's coming your way. And this is going to be something that is mentioned in that next video, so be, just to let you know. But this is something that my Nana and I talked about again the other day. We are expanding on the subject, and this was what she wanted to tell you. She wanted me, she wants to make sure that I tell you to do exactly what I'm about to show you. She loves it. Okay, there's a bunch of junk in my kitchen. <laughs> I just made cornbread, so I just put it in the oven because that's what's going to go with tonight's supper. This is a uh, wonderful meal that I want to share with you guys. And actually, I've made some videos in the past about this, but it's been a long time. We've been on YouTube, guys, for nine years. Can you believe that? So if you're a new subscriber or have only been around for a year or two, you may have missed this. A lot of you gals out there, may, or guys too, you may do this already. But my Nana, she wants me to tell you all about this again because we're, you know, preparing for a video on further discussion in terms of preparing together for a Great Depression, okay? And so I talked to my Nana again. I went and visited her. We were writing some things down, and she, honey, she got up. She went over to the freezer. She said, have you told them about this? This is my Nana's, ma she calls it magic soup, okay? And um, if you've, you've probably done something similar to this before or for other recipes, but it is the it is the queen of frugality's favorite thing to cook. It's almost like a, it's like a little, it ha, she carries pride with it, you know, because it's taking what you've got and it's stretching it to another meal. Actually, you're probably going to stretch it to two more meals because it makes such a big thing. Crock pot full of soup, yummy soup that I'm telling you, you can eat supper and you can probably eat on it again the next day. Now, what are we talking about here? If you haven't heard me say before, my Nana was born during the Great Depression, okay? And she grew up in a very poor family and my Nana learned a lot of things from her mom, her grandmother, even her great-grandmother. So we've talked about that before. So I'm really trying to pick up as much knowledge as I can and learn anything that I can from those generations because if they taught my Nana, that means she can pass that along to me. This is why I tell you it's very critical for you to speak to your elders. Listen to them, write things down, and study the history of your family. They made it, so can we. So here's what I've got going on, okay? It's just a crock pot, but in, a, in essence, we're kind of eating for pennies, which is a beautiful thing, especially when we have conversations about inflation or hyperinflation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in these different shots that I've taken to show you how I made this along the way. But I'm going to explain this to you in very simple terms, and I know you can do this. So here's what we did. Night before last, we had pot roast. I bought a small pot roast, not a huge one, just a small one. And I made a regular pot roast. I put carrots in it, onions, spices, a uh, few herbs, whatever. Just a nice little pot roast right here. We pretty much ate the majority of the meat and most of the vegetables, but there was a lot of broth left. There was some onion left, some carrots. There was remnants of the um, pot roast, so I just shredded it, right? And I put it in the refrigerator, no problem. The next day, what I did was I took it out, set it on the countertop, and then I went to my freezer. And I took out a Tupperware dish. Doesn't have to be fancy, we're not fancy. And what I did is I thawed out a concoction that I have built over time. And what do I mean by that? Well, have you ever noticed that when you maybe pick a meal, anything that you're cooking, you could have steak, you could have hamburgers, I don't know. And a lot of times you may have certain side items that maybe you didn't completely finish. It might be a couple of spoonfuls of corn. It could be that you made spaghetti one night and you've got a couple of bits of um, marinara sauce left over. Maybe you made chili one day for chili dogs or something like that, and you've got a little bit of chili left. If it is a, a meat, not fish, that gets a little funky, okay? But if you've got, say, shreds of chicken, if you've got shreds of, or bits of ground hamburger or cooked hamburger um, or anything like that, 
So if you just got little remnants that you didn't fully finish in terms of eating or using in a recipe, you, I would set a little bit aside and I would put them in this Tupperware. And the Tupperware goes into my freezer. It stays, it lives in my freezer. And what I do is I just layer it up, okay? So I, like I said, you'll find I had a layer of marinara, then I had a layer of chili, and then I had a layer of peas, and then I might have a layer of corn, and then I might have some shredded chicken. Every single time that I make this soup, it's, it's, it's kind of the same, but it's a little bit different because it's always dependent upon the leftovers of other meals, okay? And I try to keep it to very simple things such as rice, vegetables, uh, and cooked meats, okay? So it's not wasting anything. It's not going necessarily to the chickens or being thrown in the trash. We don't want to do that. We're going to make another meal out of it. So I took the basically the, the broth, a little bit of the meat, and what I had left over from the actual roast, and I just turned it on. Then I took that out, thawed it out, and I dumped it into the crock pot. So I want you to see how thick and glorious this really, really is. It's super, super hot. We're gonna have this with cornbread tonight. You can do crackers or bread. But basically what you're looking at is truly a concoction made from leftovers and a few pantry items. I added in one extra can of mixed vegetables, um, I added in a handful of rice and a handful of macaroni just a couple of hours ago, actually, right before it really, once it's really fully cooked, then you add in your, if you want to add more rice or if you want to add in your pasta, that's the time to do that. I took a couple of little red potatoes that I had. I had four little red potatoes. You see that right there? I just cut them up and threw them in there, honey. No big deal. You can add a little bit of anything that you prefer. Just let it cook, add some seasonings and you're not wasting anything from a meal that you have basically built another feast for. But this is a great way to save money. This is also a great way to save time because you're not going out to get food, you're not really eating anything that you don't already have, and essentially you're not spending any more money because you probably most likely have these items in your pantry, and like I said, you're using leftovers. You can make bread, you can make rolls, you can, our favorite is cornbread because we like to put it on the cornbread, maybe put a little cheese on top, and it makes a wonderful, hearty meal. So I know a lot of you gals out there know a lot of these tricks, okay? But a lot of the new faces and younger generations, this is how they learn. We have to show them. We have to tell them. I learned this, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago from my Nana because she made this soup one day, and I was like, how are you making, how do you do this? And she said, honey, you won't believe it. So uh, she made a believer out of me and we've been doing it ever since. Try it out. Tell me some of the things that you do. Put those tips down in the comments, guys, because guys and gals, because all the new subscribers, all these young folks, all these newer young people, they are learning from you as much as they are learning from me and we need to pass it on. All right, guys, we appreciate you. I know this is very simple and easy and you can do it, but again, all of these little tips add up and we all need to be sharing as much knowledge as possible. Like, subscribe, and share. We appreciate you. And by the way, I have several videos on how to make cornbread. Uh, if you want to see more of that, I'll put a link down in the, uh, probably I'll pin it in the top comment so you can make cornbread. But I make cornbread multiple ways. Share that too, guys. Like, subscribe, and share. I'm hungry. We're going to see you on the next video.